Hey friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman and uh, my, my good friend uh, Michelle Bauman is here. Michelle Bauman is the uh, the director of Why for Life and uh, I'm just so glad for the, the opportunity to hang out with you again. It's been all summer. How you been? Really great. It is so great to be back though. I have to tell you, I love schedules. I love fall. <laughs> Um, summer is wonderful because you get to do all these fun things and meet all these fun people. But, um, I really, I really like a schedule, so it's good to be back. I, uh, I, I love a schedule because it tells me where I'm supposed to be, but I, yeah, the routine part of it is kind of nice where you don't have to wake up and wonder. Um, I, I get to be home this week. Right. <laughs> yes. Very nice. You know, as you travel, I travel and a lot of that travel happens in the summer. So that's, it's good to, to have have a schedule again. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, now that we're actually getting a little bit of normalcy, uh, the rest of the world is not. So um, there's there's a pro-life topic, a, a, a life topic that that I see muddled up a lot. And it's um, sort of the distinction between being pro-life and pacifist. We, we know that the Middle East is, is at war again. Um, and as Christians who, who value life, uh, can we can we do anything um, but but sort of say that everything all the time forever that involves the military is, is purely evil and, and should be stopped? What's the difference between being pro-life and being a pacifist? Yeah, it's a great question because um, because war, unfortunately, is necessary and, and it happens in, in a sin-filled world, right? Um, unfortunately, war is necessary for peace sometimes. Uh, it's also very, very necessary for upholding life at times. Um, and so, and, and those, those things just don't, don't seem to go the, together. We look at war and go, this is an atrocious thing. And it is God never intended war. God didn't, didn't want his people, the people he created to fight each other and kill each other. God commands us not to murder and murder often begets war right so so when war starts when one country uh, uh, murders members of another country whether it's for their land or because they don't agree with their religious affiliation or whatever it can whatever the case may be whatever um, is causing this initial death this initial attack to happen that is not good that is not good and it is not godly but it is also the role of government to uphold and protect their lives. And so war happens because as a pacifist, we would step back and say, oh, well, you know, either A, this doesn't, doesn't uh, involve me or B, right? They can, they can protect themselves. Um, and that's not what God calls us to do, right? It's not what God calls governments to do. Uh, we see very clearly in scripture that governments are, are designed to protect the people that they serve. Um, Jesus even gives authority to government and when he speaks to his disciples and when, when um, people, when the Sadducees and Pharisees come up and question him, right? He, he gives the authority due. And so um, it is godly for a, a government to respond in order to protect its citizens. Now, it is not godly for a government to go in and try to overtake, you know, someone else, right? That's, that's not to initiate war. That's not godly, but, but to respond, to protect life, that is godly. Um, you know, the, the, when, when God gives us the law, when God tells us, um, we should not the fifth commandment, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say we should not kill because killing unfortunately happens, um, in a sin-filled world and sometimes again must must happen um, in order to protect life but God does say you shall not murder right mm -hmm. and so an act of aggression um, which initi initiates war that is that's murder right um, and so we respond to murder um, by ending it by stopping that murder and sometimes the only way to stop that murder is by, retaliating in acts of war. Um, again, very difficult. We see that even in vocations of soldier and in the vocations of, you know, right here, stateside um, police officers, right? Sometimes um, in order to protect lives, they have to make, they, they 
as um, citizens, not only as citizens, but employees of the state of the government, they have to do the things necessary to protect people and to restore peace, because it is only in peace that we um, that you know lives can be upheld, right? Those that are weak, those that that um, cannot protect themselves, need to be protected. So, yeah, I mean, it is. We certainly don't desire war. Uh, we do everything that we can to prevent it. Um, but when it happens, we should uphold those who are upholding life, right? And sometimes I really like that, that distinction. Responding. Yeah, it, it lets us sort of talk about this not in terms of is a life being taken or not, because we can all mourn when a life is taken, but rather is a life being protected. A and this is this is the motivation for a, a stance on um, something as as stereotypically pro life like like abortion, where we can draw like very sometimes hard lines to draw, but we we want to protect life. Um, and also in terms of war, there there are vocations that are given like mother and father who are supposed to protect their children. And there are vocations given like soldier who are supposed to protect their country. I, I wonder if one of the reasons we kind of struggle with this is uh, when we go out into the world, um, everybody wants to to sort of say, if our side is innocent, our side is right. But then we actually go out into the world, and we recognize that inno innocence is just sort of hard to come by. Is it does it change? Um, our position on, on war when we, we sort of find our, our own hands to be just, well, sinful and unclean. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, there is no, no perfect response to war. There is no perfect person, right? There is no perfect government. Um, and so, so we <clears throat> move forward um, with, in God's grace, right? Knowing that, um, that God too, that Christ's blood forgives this, right? Covers, covers these acts um, if if they are motivated by sinful means, um, and and we recognize that, um, and 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 we we desire for Christ to come again, right? <laughs> we we desire for that that perfect peace. Um, and I think even as individuals, like for example, obviously things are going on right now over it over in Israel. And as individuals, sometimes we feel like, how do we even respond to this, right? How do we even, um, how do we speak about this in a gospel motivated way? What can I possibly do to uphold life? And I, there are some things I think that we can do um, as, as young people, as adults, you know, certainly we can pray. We can pray for that peace, that peace that can only come through Christ, that peace that, that only happens when we recognize uh, not only the value of life, but, but the, the giver of life, right? What God intends for our relationships for, with all people. We are one people in Christ. Um, we are one race. Uh, we, we shouldn't have um, these conflicts. And so, um, so again, we can pray for that, but we can also uphold lives in the way that we speak about them. It would be very easy to get angry uh, uh, about what's happening in Israel and to say, all Muslims, all Palestinians, all whatever, right? Whatever group, the we we're angry with them and we're we're mad. Or or all Israelis, we're angry with them and we're mad about uh, the things the things that they're doing. Um, and and what we what's important to remember is that Jesus died for them too, right? Uh, Jesus died for the Palestinians. Jesus died for. For the the people of Israel, Jesus died for the, the members of Hamas, and um, and so we pray for them that they might turn away from from the the acts that they're doing. Uh, we 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 don't we condemn the acts right without falling into racism, falling into um, to categorizing people uh, in in a specific group. We recognize that that human beings are individuals and that each individual um, is loved by God, right? And so in, in the way that we speak about it and the way that we, um, you know, in our classrooms and we, we speak about it, whether how we speak about it on social media, um, just broad categories um, are not good. 
uh, we can pray for our leaders. We can pray for our government and for their governments that they would would uphold life um, and and that they would bring restore peace. Um, and even if that even if that uh, means um, a harsh reaction to war, it, you know, or a harsh reaction mm -hmm. in war, um, and we can condemn acts of violence, right? We can say that it that what happened was wrong. Right. Um, it doesn't matter whether we think um, what we think about a country. It doesn't matter about um, when that country came to be or whether or not we think that that country should be there. Right. Oh, or that people should be responding. It, what what we need to do is condemn an act of violence and recognize that God has established governments and we and and uh, in any way that we can support the governments that are pursuing peace, we should do so. Right. So on one hand, we, we want to be incredibly nuanced as far as what, what we talk about as far as just violence. But on the other hand, we're actually allowed to paint with really broad brushes in terms of just wanting it to stop. Let's set aside the nuances of the politics and then we, we pray for peace. We And in the meanwhile, we, we, we hope that our citizens would be protected. We 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 hope that those working inside of those those areas uh, would do so not out of out of malice or vengeance, but um, but but in order to to serve and love their neighbor. And then you realize that it's it's so messy that the only fix for it is not actually your politics or your policies, but Jesus coming into creation to die on the cross for both sides because both sides have real dirty hands. Um, it, it, inside right. of all of this, then um, mm -hmm. you can you can pray for a life that that's on the other side of the cross that that's in the resurrection, uh, because this side's going to be this side's going to be rough, right? And and pray for that opportunity to share that message that others would have that opportunity, right? Pray for those who are being martyred that God might use them um, and and their witness to uphold other lives. Um, pray for those who do not yet know about Christ, that um, this would bring opportunities to share that. I mean, even in the horrific circumstances, um, may, you know, may those who um, are, are detained, right, may they make a good confession, uh, may they be strengthened unto salvation, and may we as, as people um, this side of heaven work to end that conflict um, as, as soon as possible and for for the the lives of those who um, are in danger, right? Right. Well, that's uh, I think that's pretty good, Michelle. Uh, what's Wife for Life been up to lately? Lots and lots of travel, <laughs> lots of travel. Um, but we're actually in the process of hiring um, a new media assistant. So kind of right. be be on the lookout for an announcement about that this Thursday. Well, I'm not sure when this will come out, but but um, look for a podcast if it doesn't come out before Thursday on martyrs. And we're having Pastor Wolf Mueller come and speak about, about martyrs. So we're really excited about that. And we've got some really big conferences coming up. So Why for Life in Washington, D.C. is coming up in, in uh, January. And then in April, we have a conference on gender called Hope for Healing that will be happening in California. And thanks, Pastor uh, Goodman, for joining us for that. Uh, and then we have one on Why for Life on apologetics um, that will be happening also in April, but in Oklahoma. So kind of watch for those things. Our summit will be at Concordia, Nebraska this year in February. We just have a whole lot of whole lot of things going on. So um, it's That's exciting awesome. to, keep track of all to of see that? what God has placed on our plate. Yeah, check out whyforlife.org. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Michelle, thanks so much for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. <laughs>